We are back on track in converting this Victorian house to a seven bedroom HMO. The last time we were here, it was a complete disaster. We had to sack the builder and start the project again. The great news is we are back on track. If you're here for the first time, my name is Saj Hussain and on this channel I have three videos a week to help you get further faster in your property investing journey by sharing with you my 15 years of experience to help you with your property business. In this particular project, we were here a few weeks ago when we had a disaster where we had to sack the builder because the quality wasn't there. When creating luxury HMOs, the end product, the finish is absolutely critical and we were completely off par. So in this video, I wanna share with you how we are now back on track and also show you some of the USPs that we create in our HMOs. When filming the first vlog here previously, I was here with my business partner, Idas, and we were going through all the challenges and the problems that we were facing. So let's now talk about how we resolve those problems. Idas, you're supervising these projects. I can see we're making great progress here. Yes, now that we've got a new team on board, uh, we've made really good progress since we've last been here. We've actually rectified all the issues we've discussed in the last vlog, um, including fixing the boarding that was kind of out, you know, we're gonna have to go through all the boards and refit them where needed. Um, we've changed uh, the roof actually at the back, which we had the, the previous builder put a new roof, but he's reused some of the old uh, slates. So we've actually taken everything back off, put the new ones on, refitted the Velux to make it all perfect now. Um, we've kind of, quite a few things that we had to take out, such as the old windows that we kind of weren't fitted correctly. We repositioned them, strengthened the frames as we can keep going downstairs and have a look at the bay windows, we refitted, re-strengthened everything. So it's now um, really solid, really durable and the way it should be. Um, we've also, even with the lights, we've kind of, you know, when we were speaking last time, we had some um, imperfections in, in terms of the straight lines, uh, lines unfortunately, but now uh, we've reboarded the ceilings additionally and the lines are perfectly straight now for all the spotlights, so that's really good. Great, I mean, you know, we've got quite a number of spotlights in these ceilings and when they're even slightly out, it just looks weird. They look absolutely perfect now, they look fantastic. Exactly. So it's a, it's a great job. And we're at that stage now where uh, the first lot of uh, painting's been done, the first fix, uh, or in fact, the second fix they're starting to do. Uh, now we've got the food storage areas starting to go in, some sort of the, uh, the, the decorating, the way it needs to be to be finished off. Um, but the quality is the key thing, that's what we need to focus on. That's what achieves us the, the premium rents that we want from a, from a product like this. So one of the ways we, we get that is because the little detail that goes into the, into the property. So make sure you watch all the way to the end because we're gonna go into the nitty gritty of some of the USPs that we use within our properties. Later on, if you wanna see how the property looked like before, make sure to look down in the description and we'll put the link for the previous log. So what we mean by the USPs, um, it's the little things we take on that we learned from the previous projects and implement into the new ones. So we look at all the things that we feel that will be a benefit to our tenants and maximize the value for them and increase obviously um, their living experience in the projects. So for example, the CAT6 uh, cabling. Yeah, so CAT6 is something we've started doing now, but you think actually what we're doing before. Well, if we roll back the clock, say 10 years, we installed CAT5 cabling as standard then in the first HMOs that we were doing because it was much more of a need. But then we went through a phase where we phased out CAT5 and we stopped installing the data cabling in each house because everybody was using Wi-Fi, right? But actually, if we look at right now, with more people working from home, people want to stream Netflix, uh, and smart TVs they're connected to, uh, it might be IP phones they're using. So those features now are much more important, which is why we've started putting Cat6 back into the properties again. 
The other things are actually the USB charging points in the sockets. So we always used to be putting the USB charging points in the sockets, but now we've evolved with the technology and started putting in the, the C port as well, which is just kind of evolving with the technology and allowing a more user-friendly experience for our tenants. Absolutely, and I guess, Ultimately, uh, I keep saying it comes back to being able to achieve a premium product to get a premium rent. One of the things we've also been looking very carefully at is how we can maximize every inch of space in a property to make the rooms much more spacious. I know I just work very hard on the floor plans to make sure we don't waste any space. So for example, the, the ensuite rooms now that we've got are much bigger. So if you want to come on through and have a look uh, in here, you could we could probably have a communal shower in here. These are so huge, but it's about creating a luxury feel, a little bit like what you'd experience maybe in a four-star hotel. Uh, and these are things we're doing. So again, another little bit of detail like shaving points. We never used to put in the ensuite rooms before the shower rooms, but now we started fitting those as well. One of the things we do is even before we start the project and even before anybody comes on site to start work is the meticulous planning in terms of how each room and unit is going to be laid out. So for instance, these sockets, where they are, the height, the positioning has all been planned and thought through. So here we're going to have a workspace area, for example, which should double up as a desk or something like that they might want to use. And the TV will go on the wall here and the sockets will be hidden and out of the way. So all of this is done in the planning before we even start the building work on site. So for instance, also here, we have the bedside uh, sockets and the light switches, which are planned in detail exactly where they're going to go because we know what type of units uh, in terms of bedside units are going to go there. Coming following that as well, um, it's not always just about planning the, the location of the sockets, also picking out the details. So for instance here, these are the bulky lights we have chosen that will flow with the design of the rest of the of, of the rooms so these are particularly picked with the black features and the exposed wood because we will have the same features going into the kind of um, other parts of the of the rooms as well so it'll kind of create a nice thought through design across the place as the industry is evolving what we started doing is also putting a bit more focus on the communal areas um, so we want to kind of tie in the aspects that we kind of have in the units around also within the communal so for example if we kind of have a look here so before we would almost just put a box standard white radiator what we started doing now in the new projects is actually having these larger Slightly more expensive radiators, but they just make all the difference in the feel of the communal areas. Um, it just makes the communal space feel a lot nicer, and that's ultimately what it's about, is for having a nice experience for the tenant. So another USP we have, which goes completely against the grain with what most people are doing, is the size of the room. But before I talk about that, if you like the content you're seeing so far, make sure you hit that like button, and also subscribe to the channel so you can see the videos that we release, there's three videos a week just for you. And make sure you hit that notification bell as well so you get notified when we're releasing those videos. So these rooms are nice, big, spacious rooms, as I mentioned. Many of these houses, for example, on the street have these huge rooms. But the common practice is because you've got two or three windows here, is to slice the room in half and turn it into two small rooms. But really what you're doing is creating little pigeonholes which are not desirable and not nice to live in because you're trying to maximize the rent. But ultimately, if you can open the space up rather than trying to uh, comply just with the minimum room sizes of six and a half square meters, by opening this up, you're making it much more desirable, much nicer. And of course, the larger shower rooms we talked about, being able to create those. And here, for instance, also, we've created the fitted wardrobe. What that means is it's much more robust for the long term and some space to keep those suitcases, which is very desirable when it comes to rooms. 
So when we look at the designing of our units, we take inspiration from the four or five star hotels and see what they offer and try and implement that to provide the most value for our tenants. So for example, in this unit, we have three colors. Um, so you have, you have the beige color, which kind of has a few feature walls and it actually goes all the way to the floor. So it kind of even incorporates the skirting, the window sills. Then we have an off-white for the sloping parts of the room and we actually got white ceiling. So once we all will combine the colors and with all the furniture and all the little details it'll look spectacular because it'll be like almost like a little boutique unit um, this is always only had one coat of paint so once we're gonna have the second coats go on the colors will pop a little bit more as well Another thing we do is we actually implement the isolator points for every room. So if there's ever an issue that, for example, a leak or anything like that, we can turn off the water for the specific room without affecting the rest of the tenants. So it enables us to carry out repairs and maintenance without disturbing anyone else. Thanks, Aidas. If you remember, if you were here previously, this is the very room in the last vlog where we had enormous problems with this particular wall. If you haven't already watched that vlog when we were here last, we'll link it up here so you can do that. And let us know what you think of this project. Let us know what you would like to do different if this was a project you're doing and any suggestions you have for us as well because we still haven't finished. We'd love to get your suggestions. Make sure you put them in the comment section below. And of course, hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Enable the notification bell because this way we get your love. We know you're enjoying these videos and we can do more of these for you. So thank you so much for watching and we look forward to seeing you again on the next video.